Yeah. Joined right now by Jeremy Benami. He's the president of J Street, a pro-Israeli group that came out in favor of the Iran deal early on. And Ryan Grimm, Washington Bureau Chief for the Huffington Post and an MSNBC contributor. Gentlemen, this has been amazingly difficult. You've been right in the front of this fight. This is Cheney is selling Cheney. He sells it all the time. Make it what you just heard. Well, you know, these arguments were the arguments that were used to get us into the last fiasco that we had in 2002, The 200,000 people dead because of that war, and right. a, a and blowing up the Middle East. Thank you, Mr. Cheney. Right, and, lo and look what we've got today, and, yeah. and there's a real argument that you might not even have the whole situation with Iran today if it wasn't for that decision. So we've heard these... The Iraq was the only buffer against Iraq right. or Israel. Right, and it's completely changed the dynamics of the region, and we see the How about Europe? tremendous results. Everything's going to be changed because of that stupid war in Iraq. It is unbelievable, the ramifications of listening to those arguments that are now being resurfaced yeah. by him and by the Prime Minister of Israel and by some in the Republican Party in Congress today, and they're trying to sell us the same bad Politically, policy. what do you think was the worst mistake the people who were against the, the deal made? Having Prime Minister Netanyahu come here in March to make that speech. Against think, this country's it, government. Right. I mean, it really, it injected partisan politics. It made this far less of a rational discussion about the actual deal and the policy. And it was the huge mistake on, by opponents of yeah, I don't, the deal. I don't think, I don't think uh, John Boehner's a bad guy. I think that was a very bad decision. Bad mistake. Go ahead, Mike. Right, and ch and uh, when Cheney came into office, uh, there were, I believe, zero centrifuges in Iran. Uh, when he left office, there were something oh. like 5,000. How so, does he get away with that? He did. It, he, it's not clear he totally does. Even on Fox News the other day. Well, don't say it uh, that was, way. He was on pressed. Fox News. You have to say even on Fox News. That's what they do to us. Even on Matthew's <laughs> show. No, they, I mean, Wallace did a good job of interrogating him right. and, and pointing out what you just did, that the real right. advances made by the Iranian nuclear program were under Republican watch. Right, and he just looks the other way and, and just keeps repeating talking points. But history is not going to judge judge that kindly. And, and I think the, the, the fact that he came out and then you saw these flood of supporters of the deal announced their uh, their public support I, I think also says something about his credibility I think Obama couldn't have asked for a better spokesperson to come forward for the other side let me just try to turn the tables here it seems to me that in politics the safest votes as you know Jeremy and you know Ron, are to vote against something that passes or to vote for something that fails because then you're not personally responsible for what happens the consequences you've supported the arrangement what are your responsibilities now what are the responsibilities of this administration to make sure that iran doesn't get a nuclear weapon right i mean the the implementation of this deal is absolutely critical uh... living up to the promise did of you read deal. dershowitz today alan uh, dershowitz in the wall street journal not today but i've read well, it over you, the course well, his of, basic yeah. point was they say in it at least it's a preamble language that they're not gonna have a nuclear weapon right. Right, and that, that has to be, I mean, this is the president's commitment, right? And it's not just the 15 years of the deal. This is a commitment that goes beyond the deal. It's, it's in perpetuity. There's a lot of the pieces of the deal that continue beyond this window, and that's the commitment, and, and we have to make sure that the resources are there, the cooperation is there to actually implement it. Is this the end of the fight? Is it over, Ryan? Uh, th this particular fight is over, yes. Now it's, now it's about in, in implementation, but to your point, a lot of people took courageous votes, like Senator Blumenthal know, coming right? forward before it was over. People like... Wyden just now. Ron and, Wyden, you know. Sen Senator Cantwell. What did you make of Joe after. Manchin coming against the treaty? Uh, I, just what do you make of that? Trying to trying to look conservative, trying to you know look break. Republican. He he said I'm leaning yes. Like he said publicly, I am leaning yes. I he said uh, the opponents haven't made an argument for what could be done if this deal goes down. In, in other words, he saw. The, yeah. that this was something he ought to support or that he wanted to see passed. All once, the signals he said. Right. Once it, once it was passed, he said, oh, free vote, I'm voting no. Profile. Yeah, but courage. you need 41 to stop, to, to stop the resolution from passing because it is a no-confidence vote in our president. Right, which it they is. have. They have the 41. Do they think it'll hold? Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, that's a major victory for the president. Yeah. Jeremy, yeah. You, were, you were a great diplomat and a great fighter on this. Jeremy Benami okay. of J Street, which you'll be hearing a lot more from the, in the future.